Today I'm sharing with everyone the issue of elderly care. It's a tough problem worldwide. So, how should our elderly handle it? How can they ensure a happy retirement life? Here's what an 80-year-old man had to say. Mr. Chow, aged 80 this year. I have a son and a daughter. But all along, I've been particularly biased towards my son. When my son got married, I took care of everything for him. Did everything for him. But when my daughter got married, I hardly did anything. The reason I did this was mainly because I thought in the future my son could take care of me, but my daughter couldn't. This approach also made my daughter somewhat resentful towards me. But I didn't pay much mind to it. After retiring, my wife and I lived together. Although our pension wasn't much, it was enough for our daily needs. Plus, we had a 100 square meter house and a few hundred thousand in the bank. At that time, my retirement life was quite happy. But 10 years ago, unfortunate events started befalling me. First, my health declined with age. Then, shortly after, my wife passed away from illness. These two events happening one after the other plunged my retirement life into a painful abyss. After that, I decided to go to my son's house and have him take care of me in my old age. I thought I had been very loving towards my son, and since I had always favored him, he should wholeheartedly take care of me in my old age. But what I never imagined was that this was just wishful thinking on my part. When I went to my son's house, initially, he was all right with me. But after staying in my son's house for less than two months, his attitude towards me completely changed. Not only did he no longer meticulously care for me with good food and drink as before, he even began to dislike and belittle me at every turn. Sometimes, under the influence of alcohol, he would scold me harshly and he would also borrow money from me under various pretexts. After staying at my son's house for just half a year, I couldn't bear it anymore. I immediately chose to leave. After leaving my son's house, I wanted to go to my daughter's house and have her take care of me. But when I thought about how I had treated my daughter in the past, I felt too ashamed to go to her house. However, my old age still had to go on. So I decided to go to a nursing home. At the time, a friend recommended a nursing home to me that not only had reasonable prices, but also good quality services. So I went. The nursing home I stayed at charged 5,000 yuan per month. To be honest, this fee wasn't too expensive for me. But I was truly shocked by the quality of service. Often, even late at night, some elderly residents would not only stay awake themselves, but also make a lot of noise in the corridors, making it difficult for me to sleep every night. And don't even get me started on the food at the nursing home. They said it was meat and vegetables, but what was served on my plate was just a few pieces of meat. Sometimes the rice was hard. The steamed buns were undercooked. Although there were staff cleaning the rooms inside and outside regularly. After they finished cleaning, the dirt and odors remained. While there were plenty of caregivers when there was nothing to do. When there was an emergency, none of them could be found. After living in the nursing home for five months, I couldn't bear it anymore. So I immediately moved out of the nursing home. Shortly after leaving the nursing home, I decided to spend money to hire a caretaker to take care of me. At the time, I thought, since a caretaker provides one-on-one -on -one care, my retirement life shouldn't be too bad. But reality played a big joke on me again. At first, maybe because the caretaker was unfamiliar with me, or maybe to disguise himself, I was quite satisfied with his care. Besides serving me good food and drink every day, he also diligently did various household chores for me. And in his free time, he would chat with me or accompany me for walks or shopping. 
but this situation only lasted for three months. The caretaker changed. He didn't take care of me wholeheartedly anymore. Nor did he pay attention to housework. Instead, he asked for a raise from me. Asked for bonuses from me. And even repeatedly asked me for living expenses. I couldn't bear it anymore. I scolded him a few times. But not only did he not realize his mistakes. He even blamed me. And finally, he voluntarily resigned. Since then, I never chose any other retirement plan. Instead, every week, I spend money to hire a part-time worker to clean and do household chores for me at home. For meals, sometimes I cook something simple at home. Sometimes I eat out or order takeout. For daily necessities, I can buy them at the supermarket in our community. And for things the supermarket doesn't have, I buy them online. If I feel bored at home, I can choose to visit friends, or chat with neighbors, or just spend time on my phone like young people do to pass the time. I've been living this way for a full four years now. To be honest, I feel very happy and satisfied with my retirement life now. My experiences with my son taking care of me, hiring a caretaker, and the nursing home have made me deeply understand that. To have a happy and fulfilling retirement life in old age, it's necessary to do these five things. First, having good health is essential. Just as one needs a good body to create a happy life when young. Likewise, one needs good health to enjoy their retirement life in old age. Simply put, no matter what age one is, having good health is a must. Without good health, everything is in vain. So when we are young, besides striving to create our own happiness, we must also take care of our health. If you are plagued by illness in old age, or even unable to take care of yourself, then even if you want to rely on yourself for retirement, you'll be unable to do so. Second, understanding the importance of saving money. After getting old, one not only needs money for basic necessities like food and shelter, but also for medical treatment, medication, and retirement. If we save enough retirement funds for ourselves when we are young, then all these problems are solved. Otherwise, when we face these problems, we can only helplessly accept them. So when we are young, we must save money. We cannot live beyond our means so that in old age, we can have our own savings. You may not need savings, but you can't be without them. Third, having a good temper and personality. As we all know, no matter what age one is, we need to interact with different people and socialize, especially for elderly people. We generally face situations where our spouse passes away and our children are not around. At such times, to alleviate loneliness, we can only talk to someone or chat with someone. But if our temper and personality are bad, then people will avoid. Some elderly people think that when they're old, there's no point in learning new things. But that's just not true. In fact, as we age, it's even more important to keep up with the times. Things like using smartphones, shopping online, ordering food delivery, or even handling digital payments are all essential skills nowadays. If we don't adapt, we might find ourselves left behind by society. So, regardless of age, it's crucial to stay updated and embrace technological advancements. As we grow old, we face the dilemma of how to live out our later years. With the development of society, there are increasingly diverse options for elderly care. You can enjoy city life in urban areas, return to rural areas for a simpler lifestyle, or even travel extensively. However, as we age, the need for care becomes more apparent. You might realize that some seemingly ideal retirement options aren't as satisfying in reality. For instance, Staying in a nursing home might seem convenient, but the experience can be disappointing. 
While it may provide basic necessities, it can also feel confining, like a bird trapped in a cage. Similarly, relying on rotating dinners among children's homes might seem fair, but it can strip away your independence. There's also the scenario of pooling resources with strangers for elderly care, but this can lead to conflicts if values and habits don't align. We've seen examples of close-knit communities of elderly individuals living together harmoniously, but it's not always easy to find that perfect match. Then there's the common belief that relying solely on sons for elder care is a reliable option, but oftentimes, it's more trouble than it's worth. Just like the poet Jose Marti said, I look at the cradle, my son is growing up. I have no right to rest. Many parents pin their hopes on their sons for support in their old age, but this dependence can backfire if circumstances don't align. Ultimately, each family must find their own path, one that's warm and tailored to their needs. And that's a wrap. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to ask.